He's not going to make it. My heart started hammering in my chest. I could hear my brother calling my name through the phone, but all I could focus on was trying to get to the hospital. The person I loved more than anyone in the world was barely hanging on, and in that moment, my whole world came crashing down. Growing up, I spent most of my childhood commuting back and forth on the GO train to Toronto General Hospital. As a kid, I never really thought anything of it because it was so normal for me. I would spend my holidays and sometimes even school days at the hospital. People would often say that hospitals freaked them out, but not me. I loved going there. My little brother and I would always get treats and everyone would be so nice. Some days, I would even get to miss school and just spend the whole time hanging out with my dad. However, my dad wasn't like other dads. He couldn't run or play with me in the park, and many times he would get sick out of nowhere. You see, the reason why I spent so much time at the hospital was because my dad was born with dextrocardia, a rare heart condition that caused the transposition of the greater arteries to be formed backwards. Basically, from the day my dad was born, he spent pretty much his entire life in the hospital. It started when he was a few days old, the doctors found out that my dad's heart was backwards, and he was forced to have an open heart surgery. No one thought he would make it, but he pulled through. And even though my dad had these issues, he never let it stop him from enjoying life. My dad finished high school at the top of his grade and met my mom at university. She fell in love with his laughter and ability to make any situation funny. When he found out that she was pregnant with me, he was worried that he wouldn't be good enough to be a father, but my mom knew he would be a great dad and he was. He always made sure that my little brother and I had time with him, whether that was playing dress up or having a game of hide and seek. He was my favorite person in the entire world and I loved every minute I spent with him. But when I was eight years old, my dad underwent his first heart transplant. I didn't really understand what was happening at the time and only thought that my dad was sick again, but that he would be home soon. However, I remember my family members hugging me and telling me that we needed to pray for his survival, but I didn't think he could possibly pass away. For the next 10 years, it was the usual going to Toronto for biopsies and checkups. Every day, my dad had to take the same handful of capsules and be careful of daily tasks. So even though he could never go on road trips or to the park, he was my dad, and he was perfect. When I was 18, my dad's heart started to have serious problems. It got to the point where he had to have a second heart transplant. Except this time, there was only 20% chance that my dad would survive. I remember sitting in that cold, dark room, waiting for 10 hours, and all I could focus on was my brother's muffled sobs. I sat there hoping and praying to God that he would make it through. I wasn't ready to lose him yet. It wasn't fair. I couldn't. All I could do was wrap my arms around my body. But luckily, my dad survived. He made it through the surgery and proved everyone wrong. For a moment, it felt like God had given my dad a new start to life. He could walk properly, and he was happy and chatting like nothing had happened. But this didn't last. A month later, my dad could no longer walk on his own and lost his ability to speak, only able to mumble some words here and there. It was so unfair. My dad was given another chance at a normal life for it to be ripped away again. My dad even needed help to use the restroom. It was so hard to see him like that, but we tried to see the positives in life. However, a year later, my life changed completely. I was sleeping over at my boyfriend's house when I got a call at 1 a.m. It was from my brother. Dad's not going to make it. You need to get here now. As soon as I heard those words, my heart stopped. I dropped the phone and looked at my boyfriend. I mustered as much courage as I could and whimpered, It's, it's my dad. Please, we have to go. My boyfriend grabbed my hand and we drove as fast as we could to the hospital. As soon as I got to the room, I saw him, the person I loved more than anyone in the whole world, laying there in that bed, barely hanging on. My mom told me that he had felt sick the whole day, but they kept him alive as long as they could so he could say goodbye to me. My dad was trying so hard that even when they removed his oxygen and the medication, he still wouldn't let go. I grabbed his hand and said, 
Dad, it's okay. Please rest. Please. We will be okay. He finally closed his eyes and passed away. I couldn't breathe, and the room started spinning. I didn't know how long I sat outside for, but all I could do was try to make sense of my loss. My heart had never felt so empty. In the end, it was sepsis that took my dad. His body was already so weak from the surgery that he had no chance. The infection caused his immune system to damage his organs, which forced them to shut down. My dad tried to hold on for as long as he could, but because we didn't catch it early enough, my dad was taken away from us. After his passing, I had never felt so heartbroken. It felt like I didn't even know how to live anymore. Every day I would walk past his old room and my heart would break over and over again. The biggest regret that I have in my life is that I never told my dad how much he meant to me and how much I appreciated his love and presence in my life. I didn't even get to thank him for everything he did for me because when he was sick, he still put my brother and I first. Even though my dad is gone, I still feel him here by my side. So please, always have compassion for the people closest to you. Do not let an argument ruin what you have with someone, because you never know if the last thing you say will actually be the last. You never know how long you have on this earth, so please make the most of it.